Would you rather sign Ivan Tony or Victor Osman? Let me know what you guys think in the comment section. We're going to take a deep dive into this. Look at both Ivan Tony and Victor Osman, the pros and cons, a little bit of their injury history, what they're up to today, and how they would fit into this Arsenal team and how they would be slightly different and who I would pick at the end of the video. Let me know what you guys think and leave a wonderful comment and I'll try to get to it, of course. And if you're new to these videos, they're my slight reaction videos where I speak about topics that I think are quite important within the Arsenal fan base and wider football. But of course, let's get the show started. Bye. So if you guys have been living under a rock or something else, I'll let you guys know what's going on with Arsenal and Arsenal news. Apparently, we're linked to both Ivan Tony and uh, Napoli's Victor Osimhen. Now, if you don't know, Ivan Tony is currently suspended for betting a betting scandal where he was found betting on games, and he's now been suspended for that until January. Then you have um, then you have uh, Victor Osimhen, who's currently in Napoli, who's just signed a new contract. That will potentially be giving him a release clause of 130 million pounds or euros. I need to double check, but it's uh, but it's around that price. So both of them are attainable in in the foreseeable future. Ivan Tony would be attainable in January. Potentially, Arsenal could maybe even see a transfer of Eddie and Ketia going the other way, as they have been interested in Eddie and Ketia. So let me know: Would you guys want to sell Eddie and Ketia? And if you could, if we would, would you include him in the swap deal? But swap deals are always very difficult because teams want money up front. So let's look at the two. Who would you rather sign? Ivan Tony in January or Victor Osimhen in the summer? Because Napoli are not going to sell him when they're still in the Champions League, when they're still in uh, doing well in the league to any of their uh, anybody at this moment in time. Victor Osimhen is essential piece to their puzzle and he is one of their main talisman who helped them win the Serie A last season. Where Ivan Tony. Brentford are doing quite well even without him. So they might be able to sur surplus his requirements quite easily since they didn't have him for the first part of the season. And selling him in January won't hurt them as much as Victor Osimhen could potentially hurt them if you get him out of that Napoli team mid-season. So first thing I'm going to look at, I'm going to look at their injury histories. And if you guys don't know, the two clubs have, the two players have very different injury histories. And this is where Ivan Tony wins. Ivan Tony wins on this one because he's only had one injury uh, in his whole entire career. It was an ankle injury back in 15, 16 season when he played for Newcastle. That is a big positive for Ivan Tony because when you look at Victor Osimhen's injury history, it is a little concerning. A little concerning. Yes, Victor Osimhen just this season alone has missed six games. Last season when they won the league, he missed a total of uh, 11 games due to two injuries. The good thing is the shoulder injuries were a long time ago, so he doesn't have reoccurring shoulder injuries anymore. But the problem is, similar to what Reese James has now, he's having reoccurring muscular injuries in his hamstring, muscular fatigue. Those things can linger and continuously come back. So injury history is a slight concern for Ivan Tony. That is where some people would say, I mean, uh, Victor Osman, that's where some people would say Ivan Tony uh beats Victor Osimhen in the debate when it comes to injuries. But guess what? There's some players who have really bad injury histories that, that turn out to be really good transfers. And there's players who have clear, clean injury histories that end up getting injured every two weeks, similar to a certain Thomas Partey. You know what? We're going to talk about Thomas Partey another day. Let me know in the comments if you'd sell or keep Partey. But that's a story for another day. Let's talk about Victor Osimhen now, though. So Osimhen, this is what we need to know. This is what, uh, hopefully I showed both stats. I, I, I'm not even sure if I did that. But when it comes to, um, let's let's show, this is Victor Osimhen's stats. And we got to see, we got to look at where he's played. He's played at Wolfsburg, where he didn't really get an opportunity. Lille was where he really broke out. He's, of course, Nigeria's talisman. He's one of the main men at Nigeria. And Napoli is where he's, gone levels and he's scoring 26 goals in the main league and he's scoring five goals in the Champions League getting his team to like how far did they get 
semifinals or uh, quarterfinals of the Champions League last year. So just goes to show you he's played at the top level and he's done things that Ivan Tony has not been able to do. The, the only positive that Ivan Tony has in this area is that he's played in the Premier League, where, now, where Victor Osman has not played in the Premier League. Doesn't really move the needle, though. That's the honest truth. Playing in the Championship and playing in the Premier League is not a positive. It's just the fact that he might be a little bit more familiar with the physicality of the Premier League. But guess what? He played in Ligue 1, Victor Osman. So Ligue 1 is probably one of the most physical leagues in Europe. So on that aspect, they're quite even. But I'll slightly give it to Victor Osman on that one because he has played in the Champions League and absolutely smashed it for Napoli. So at this point, it's 1-1. Here is where the winner is decided in my books. Who is the bigger level raiser? Victor Osman is clearly the bigger level raiser. Victor Osman is clearly the bigger difference maker. Ivan Tony is a quality player, but he does not move the needle as much as Victor Osman for me because of all the different attributes. Yes, Ivan Tony can hold up the ball. Yes, Ivan Tony can, can score goals. He's clinical. He's a good finisher, all of those things. But the touches, the ability that Victor Osman has, he's very similar to Gabriel Jesus. This could be a pro or a con in your opinion. If, if you guys think this is a pro or a con, let me know. But with his ability in and around the box, Victor Osman just slightly is better than, than Ivan Tony for me. That's for me. I I am one of the biggest Ivan Tony fans you're going to find. But in my opinion, if we look at the underlying numbers, they will tell you that Victor Osman is one of the best strikers in world football at this moment in time. And if and and that's not just like that's not just his non-penalty goals, that's not just his total shots, that's not just what he does, GA everything. His touches in the penalty box, his uh, his ability to hold up on a uh, hold up play and to make people look foolish in the box, his ability to create in the box also. Where as for Ivan Tony, we haven't seen him do enough because yes, he's played for a Brentford side and maybe with the opportunity playing around better players, you might see more, but it might also be too, the lights might be too bright for him. There's a lot of ifs here, ands and buts, but it comes down to this. Do you want to get the more sure thing in Ivan Tony and sp spend more money and have the risk of him having a little bit more of an injury history, or and of course he is the younger player. Ivan Tony, uh, uh, Victor Osman is younger than Ivan Tony. If you guys don't know, just to let you guys know, he is younger. Uh, Victor Osman is 24, where Ivan Tony, if I'm not mistaken, he is 27. So we're looking at a three-year difference here. One is going to cost us 130 million. Other one potentially could cost us around 80 million. One we can get in January could help us with the title race right now. The other one we're going to have to wait in the summer. Personally for me, I'm going to wait. I love Ivan Tony. I think he's a quality player, but I have a feeling we're not going to end up getting him. I feel like Ivan Tony is going to probably end up at Chelsea. And if he comes in in January, it's a, t it's a title push and it's not a long term play but i still back ivan tony and he's been one of my major targets for arsenal for a long time the only reason why i'm picking victor Osman is because one he's attainable two he has a release clause that is around 130 and it's not ridiculous three we could even potentially swap deal gabriel jesus as been reported today by uh, by uh, by one uh, by one of the people on twitter let me show you what i mean reported today that we could potentially find Victor Osman and Gabriel Jesus swap deal to get the deal over the line. And if that is and if that is true, that is a massive step forward to us secure potentially securing the, the transfer. Now, will Gabriel Jesus happen in the deal? I don't think so. I think we probably keep Gabriel Jesus in any situation, but this could be a possibility. Now keep an eye out on it. Let me know what you guys think. I personally like both Ivan Tony and and Victor Osman. I'm only taking Victor Osman because he's a slightly a better, uh, uh, he's younger and he's a more of a level raiser with his all around game and what he's done already in Europe. Where Ivan Tony, we haven't seen him at the top level yet. Sometimes players make these steps, and when they're not the main man, they find it difficult. I'm not saying Ivan Tony's going to do that, but there's a lot more questions about Ivan Tony adjusting to this team where Victor Osman, I don't think so. 
The only question mark over Victor Osman is his injury history, which is slightly a concern, and the fact that he hasn't played in the Premier League. But hey, I'll leave it up to you guys. Let me know in the comment section who would you pick, Ivan Tony or Victor Osman. Let me know in the comments. I'm out of here, people. And if you guys have enjoyed this video, let me know what you guys think. And you guys can check out my Twitter and my TikTok and my YouTube channel here. Hit the like button, hit that subscribe button, and leave me a comment down below what you guys think. I'm going to leave you guys here. If you enjoyed this series, let me know. I'm going to continue doing more videos like this. Peace. Mm -hmm.